The Boys, Season 2, Episode 5. Um, this episode was a lot better this week. So, we start off with them, or the bot company, filming the prequel to the seventh here. And it looks like Avengers, There's the whole city is in rubble and everything, and Maeve goes up to this girl that's saying, help me, I'm trapped, and Maeve gets her out of there, and the girl, of course, has to tell her she's a lesbian, because Abe's been outed the last episode here, so they're making a big deal of it already now, so. <laughs> now this part, <laughs> I just love Homelander. <laughs> Homelander is sitting there acting like he's watching soft porn or something or lesbian porn or something. He's just really enjoying messing with Maeve here and Maeve's about had enough of his crap and it's like, what do I have to do to get you to stop with this? And Homelander's like, oh, you're a proud lesbian. You should be proud and women get it on and all this. And <laughs> So the PR lady tells him that there's some terrorist in Somalia or I don't know where this is. It looks like Africa or somewhere and he's killing the villagers and all this. So Homelander flies in there and kills this guy. He laughs at him and then just kills him flat out. But his eye beams go through the guy so fast that there's some kid behind him or something that he ends up getting killed accidentally. So there's collateral damage from this. So the PR lady's like, well, somebody there had a phone in the village and Homeland is like, are you kidding me? Like, what? what's the big deal? And that, that should be a good thing and all this. And she's like, well, you accidentally killed a, a child and you've dropped by nine points now and I guess there's some rating system or what but Homelander's like he he didn't expect to drop down that much and now the government hates him and the people and he's got like this huge ego loss thing now and so we're we cut to the butcher and he is at some bar and he's like depressed and bummed out from what happened with his wife there and that whole thing with the wife is just I don't know where they're going with that or what what it is it's just I mean the whole first season is him trying to get his wife well the first season he didn't even know she was alive I mean t till the end but you know he's like trying to kill Homelander to get revenge for his wife and then she, he finds out she's alive, and then he goes and tries to get her out, and she don't want to leave. So I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Like, I mean, I don't know. That was very bad storytelling, or m maybe later on it'll make sense. I don't know, but I just, I just felt bad for him because... He goes through all of this to get her back, and then she's like, oh, no, I'm going to stay here because you called my kid a freak or whatever. I mean, it was just, I don't know. So, anyways, Butcher decides to go start a fight with some bar patron guy for no reason. I don't know why he did this. The only thing I can equal it to is it being like, those little girls that cut their arms with razor blades or whatever to feel alive or something like it gives them a thrill or something like that's the only thing I could get out of why he was doing this he he wanted to be beat up and punched or something I mean I don't I don't know I just it's kind of a weird thing so Huey calls Butcher after that and he's telling him hey you know this Liberty chick that killed this guy 70 years ago is Stormfront, actually. So the butcher's like, oh, well, that's good news. We're, I'm going to live in Argentina, and I'm going to go retire and all this. And 
you were a good friend to me and I'm sorry I was a dick and all this and so Huey's telling home home milk all this and home milk's like oh no this is bullshit we um this is crap here I mean this is he got us into this so he knows where he's going apparently so the butcher shows up at his mom's house and he is you know bummed out and hoping to feel better and stuff and he doesn't want to see his dad for some reason and I don't know there's some family drama and so <laughs> here's a train who's still butthurt about being kicked out of the seven with their JJ Abrams wannabe so he's trying a train's trying to rewrite the script to make him look better or have his ending be where it's possible he could come back or something, but the way this J.J. Abrams guy's doing it is like, oh no, we're gonna go with the with the script we have, and that's what we're doing. And A Train's like, well, I'm not gonna do this because it doesn't leave room for me to possibly come back. And I know it's just a bit of a pissing match between him and this director. <laughs> Now we're back with the deep again <laughs> with his Scientology crap. <laughs> this whole thing with the Scientology is just, <laughs> man, I tell you, it's, they're really nailing Scientology. So here, here's the deep with his finger quotes, chosen wife, that I'm not so sure they're getting along this well. well I guess we'll see later on. I mean, the deep really wanted that. I don't know who that girl was, like some Italian girl or something last episode. He really wanted her more than this lady here. So, I don't know. The Deep's just drinking more and more Kool-Aid, apparently. So then we uh, have Kamiko here, who's, for some reason, decided to become an assassin. And she takes out these three... Bosnian guys like nothing, man. I mean, she just Swiss cheeses them like nothing. It's just, she just kills them so fast. And it's, it's a bit of a gruesome scene. I'll say that. So then we're back to um, the butcher. And now uh, Mother's Milk and Huey are there. And the butcher's like, what's this crap? And Honey's Milk's like, oh, I thought you were going to Argentina, bro. What's up? And all this. And the butcher's like, screw this. So he just goes to get in his car to leave. <laughs> and who does he see in the rear view here? Black Noir. So he's like, okay, um, this ain't good. So he goes back in the house calmly and he tells uh, Mother's Milk and Huey and Mother's Milk's like, okay, well, we're going to say there's a gas leak because if this guy wants to kill us, he's going to have to do it with a bunch of people here that witness this. So they call in this gas leak and, I don't know, it gives them some time, I guess. So anyways, here we are. <laughs> this is the best definition of this woke crap in Hollywood. I mean, this stupid, woke garbage, this is the best example you were ever, you were, you'll ever see of this. I wish they would make more of this on the show, where they're exposing these idiots and showing this stupid crap. So, anyways, these two directors, they're trying to queer pander to Maeve here and use her sexuality to... I don't know, just queer pander, basically. They're like, oh, look at look at you. We made this proud drawing, and here you are holding the, the rainbow flag and all of this, and we're going to really show people that you can be a proud lesbian superhero and all of this stuff. And So this other guy, he shows a picture, <laughs> and that's supposed to be the wife, and... Well, I won't if I call that lady Maeve's wife. I guess she's just 
they're in some sort of a relationship. I don't really know what's going on there. So anyways, the girlfriend's like, why am I, why am I dressed like this? Why am I dressed like a man and all this? And they're explaining, oh, we're all, our polling, it shows that you need to have a clear definition of who's the husband and who's the wife in this. That's why Ellen DeGeneres and Portia, they have a, a clear definition of things and they go into this whole thing and it's just really stupid and hilarious. I mean, this really is how Hollywood is apparently with this stupid woke crap and you wonder why nobody watches movies and stuff anymore. So anyways, Frenchie has been following Kamiko. He watched her kill those three Bosnian guys like nothing. So he follows her to the church, and then he finds out that his booty call middle man or middle girl person that does hits with him from before has now hired Kamiko or is using Kamiko to assassinate people. I guess Kamiko thinks it'll make her feel better or something. And her, her and uh, Frenchie they get in some argument and why Kamiko will not teach him how to talk to her is the most irritating, stupid thing on this show. They really need to fix this thing with Kamiko. I don't know. I mean, she can't even write a sentence or anything. Like, all she could write before was the boy, the boy. And he's like, I don't understand. And then she won't teach him, and then she gets frustrated because he can't understand her. But she won't teach him, so I don't know. It's just kind of a catch-22, so Frenchie's like, you can't just go around killing these people, and I know you think it'll make you feel better, and all of this stuff, and it's just, I don't know, this whole thing with her. I mean, I don't blame Kamiko for being hurt and everything. I feel bad for her, but... <laughs> Becoming an assassin, I don't think, is the best idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> here we are with The Deep and L. Ron Hubbard, basically. Or David Miscavige, I guess I would say. At the uh, Scientology building. And they've uh, streamlined and rushed The Deep through all their training or whatever. And they have him making this silly Scientology commercial for them and <laughs> this whole thing with the deep <laughs> I'm not sure how this is going to end with the with the Scientologists <laughs> so next we have uh, our AOC person on here I mean this is this is basically Ana Anastasia Ocasio Cortez that democratic nutso and she is um, going on and on about what Homelander did, and he's just killing people indiscriminately, and she's trying to make it out like, hey, he, he didn't care, and he didn't, I mean, Homelander probably didn't care, to be honest, but Homelander is not just going around killing people randomly, I mean, he's killing people, but He's not doing it randomly, like how she's trying to make it out. So she's trying to get this crowd wound up and get them like, you know, this guy, we need to make better laws and we need to have people, we need to hold the heroes accountable and all this. And so here comes Homelander and he's talking to the people directly and He's like, hey, this is war, you know, stuff happens, and, you know, I, I, what was I supposed to do, not take this guy out, and then the people are like, oh, we're not with you, and this Marine guy's like, oh, you're not a soldier, and all this, and they have a scene that's, the first time I watched it, I was like, uh-oh, I mean, they show him getting mad, and then he basically does kill all of them. And you're just freaking out, but then it cuts back to him like it was like he had that thought of doing that, like he thought about doing that. 
and he didn't kill them. He just flew away because he realized he couldn't win with them. And he's trying to get their trust back and everything. So here we are in uh, Butcher's mother's basement, and they've booby-trapped the whole house. And Black Noir is now in the house, and he's walking around trying to find them and see where they are. And you can hear bombs go. I wish they had shown this. I don't know why they didn't show uh, Black Noir getting hit by those bombs. You just you just see the roof shake in the basement. Like You can hear it like he's getting hit with bombs all over the place. So Homelander here is having more of his breakdown, and he is just, you know, in the gutter and feeling like total crap, and, you know, he wants everybody to love him and all this, this obsession with the, the people liking him and all this garbage, and so Black Noir figures out where the boys are, and he throws a gas grenade down there somehow through like a ac vent or something and you know they have to get out of get out of the basement so they get out of there and uh the butcher tells huey and honey's milk get out of here i'm gonna die to black noir and take the hit and all this and him and black noir have a bit of a fight and then mother's milk comes in and tries to shoot the hell out of him and black noir just I can't tell what he did. He looks like he threw a knife at him or something. And then Huey comes in and he starts shooting at him. And he gets knocked down. And then Black Noir is getting ready to kill Huey. And the butcher says, if you kill him, if any of us die, there's going to be uh, pictures released of Homelander's child with my wife that expose Homelander as a rapist and a kidnapper and all of this. So here we have the guy from Breaking Bad, and I guess he's watching this through Black Noir's camera or something, and he's talking to he's talking to him directly, and the guy says, well, how do I know that you actually have this? And the Birch is like, well, you don't know that I don't have this. You're going to have to roll the dice here and he ends up telling Black Noir to back off and leave them alone so Black Noir leaves and that's pretty much that but I thought that was kind of I don't know I mean one of them should have died there for sure I don't want them to die but I mean I was like well I mean the butcher just basically talked himself out of that so I don't know I mean, I, I, I wonder if he has those pictures. I sure hope he does. So the butcher is telling his mother, you know, I'm sorry, and I didn't mean to blow up your house, and he's saying goodbye to his dog again, and they're just a, just a goodbye scene, and I guess the boys are back together again. So this is the ending here where... Stormfront and uh, Homelander. I wasn't expecting this, to be honest. I mean, I thought there was going to be a fight, and I thought possibly Stormfront would die or be injured or have to flee or something. But they end up knocking boots here, and it's probably one of the funniest scenes I've ever seen. So, now... Homelander is under Stormfront's spell here, so I'm not exactly sure how this is going to end, but um, this is not how I what I thought, but I mean, it's kind of funnier in a way when I think about it. I mean, he's being cucked, you know, I don't really care for that, but I don't know. I mean, he's definitely under her spell now. She got his precious rating points back up, so... I don't know. I mean, that's pretty much it for this episode. It wasn't a bad episode. It was a lot better than last week's. I mean, last week's episode was just, man, that was so boring. I mean, this at least had something going on here. 
Anyways, um, that's it. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.